I saved money buying my CNC. Or did I? CNCers, there are so many videos out there about how to make money with your CNC. But I started wondering if buying my CNC saved me money because I was able to make things myself instead of buying them. From straight up cost comparisons to the intangible priceless aspects of making a project for myself, I've got my comparison criteria armed and I'm going to break down my favorite money saving projects. Here's my criteria for assessing whether I saved money making these projects on my CNC myself versus buying them. First criteria, overall cost. Seems simple enough, which one costs less? Time to create the project. You thought I wouldn't factor in my time? Come on, as they say, time is money. But to be fair, I use $30 an hour as a rate so I could assign an actual value to this category. Quality of the end product, both materials and how they function uniqueness. Can you even buy some of the things that I made? Uh -huh, that's a good category. Did making the item lead to a sale? Which is something the bought versions are unlikely to do for you, I might add. <laughs> intangibles. Ah, the great intangibles. The things we can't put a price on. Keep in mind that all the projects I'm about to talk about were made using machines and accessories from CNC Labs. These guys. If you're trying to figure out which CNC or accessory is right for you, we've got you covered. Our online store has everything you need to get started and to keep you creating. For the first project, I'm starting out with the low hanging fruit. Something easy to make, something easy to grab material for, cornhole boards. Between time and materials, I calculated my cost to be about 330 bucks. From a quality of build standpoint compared to what's for sale out there, I'd say that mine were at a similar, similar, I can't say the word similar, similar level of material and finish. Okay, so what about customization? You can go and buy customized boards. Of course you can. But in order to get a custom design to match the level that my boards are, you have to pay quite a bit more. Now, what about uniqueness? From a board construction standpoint, there's nothing particularly special going on here. But let's not forget that when you have your own machine, you have the ability to change the design of the game itself, not just, you know, the graphics. To have someone customize the boards like that would add some primo dollars to the cost. So did these cornhole boards lead to a sale? After I posted these boards, I had a number of people ask me to make wooden CNC things just for them. But the question I asked was, did I save money buying a CNC to make things myself? In the case of these cornhole boards, I'd say I'm a about even versus buying because of the level of customization that I did with the design itself. There you have it. I didn't really save any money on my first set of cornhole boards. Maybe this video wasn't such a good idea after all. Project one in the books. Project number two is a fun one because cutting metal is not something I've spent a lot of time doing. So I expected my time to account for a lot of my cost here. These metal panels were something that the wife wanted for the backyard. When she started looking at buying a bunch of them, I nearly had a heart attack when I saw the cost. And the ones she found weren't even that nice, to be totally honest. I told her there is no way I'm buying those. I'm just gonna make them myself. It cost me approximately 325 bucks to make the first panel. Most of that cost was time to design it. From a quality standpoint, I will absolutely give the nod to the Purchase Panels powder coat finish. Their finishes are smoother and more professional than my rattle can spray jobs. I will say in my defense, however, that I did not give my best effort when I painted these. So that is an area that I could improve upon, but ultimately their finish would likely still be better than anything I'm going to do. Here's where the tide turns though. The wife wanted to buy six of these panels for around our yard. 
quick math equals 250 per panel times six panels, that's 1500 bucks. It's a lot of cash. So you're probably sitting there saying, Scott, there's no way you saved money buying a CNC to make your own if one of your panels cost you 325. The first one did cost me 325 bucks. I calculated that the second through fifth panels only cost me about 140 bucks each. The design was already done. It cost me about a thousand bucks to make six panels myself versus 1500 bucks to buy them. My cost includes being paid and they're still cheaper. Project number two, done. I saved money on this one. Project number three, fishing lures. Time and materials. I'm looking about 50 bucks per lure. Keep in mind, I made the first batch out of scrap chunks of two by four, so there's no real cost there. All right, so how about the quality of the final product? My lures do not compare to the fit and finish of the bot versions. My carves are nice, the actual, you know, details, but the paint jobs are absolute trash. The lips leave a ton to be desired. A lot. <laughs> the action on my lures is at best, absolutely awful. But there must be a silver lining, otherwise why would I include this project on my list? Time. Time with my kids. Time spent making lures with my kids. Time spent painting and finishing the lures with my kids. And ultimately, even though they sucked royal at catching fish, time casting the lures and being together with my kids. Now, if that doesn't pull on your heartstrings, nothing will. So for this project, I'm more than happy to take the financial loss. So perhaps I didn't save any money making my own lures, but the time spent together and the memories made are priceless as far as I'm concerned. Project number four is yet another reason why I saved money buying a CNC. I made something that does not exist. Aha, <laughs> put a price on that. Luckily for me, I have a CNC and guess what I can do with that CNC? I can make stuff that doesn't exist. That's what I can do with it. Did it still cost me to make this giant wand? Of course it did. Time and materials are about 180 bucks. And I'm feeling much less cocky about this project now that I say that number out loud. The reality is there's about $2 worth of relatively scrap glued up 2x4 in this project. There is a fair amount of time invested here, but most of that is actually carve time. When you create a product or a project, do you charge your client full price for your machining time? Let us know in the comments whether actual machine carve time should be charged out at the same rate as say your design or your finishing time. So did I save money carving my own giant wand? When you consider that the 15 inch replicas go for on average about 60 bucks. That means the per inch cost for those wands is about four bucks. So bust out some simple math again and my 32 inch wand would be worth about 130 bucks to buy by that cost calculator. <laughs> it's, I'm really bad at this. However, there aren't any 32 inch wands to buy, are there? No, there is not. So I go back to my uniqueness criteria and challenge you to find fault in the fact that I made something that does not exist to buy. <laughs> Becky from Vectric thought enough of my giant wand, the good one. She traded me for a one of a kind piece of art that she created at this year's UGM in Texas. I found the cathedral. If you haven't seen those videos, make sure you head over to YouTube and check them out. If my full size wand was good enough to impress someone who comes from the birthplace of Harry Potter himself, then clearly it's got game, and I'm good. Project number four, score. So we come to the final project for my money-saving CNC experiment. I think it's pretty obvious that I love what I do, and I hope you feel the love too. So make sure you like and subscribe if you like what you've seen here today. Believe it or not, each and every clicky counts to help us making the algorithm happy so we can keep making great CNC content for you guys. Project number five, I saved the best for last, in my personal opinion, guitar number one.
my baby, my pride and joy. Let's get down to brass tacks on this one. Time and materials to build this beautiful guitar, about 1700 bucks, give or take a few pennies. Time accounts for about 80% of the costs that I calculated. From a cost standpoint, I mean, it's a lot, but it's not bad in my humble opinion for a custom guitar. Remember that word, custom. The whole point of this video was to compare like things, right? So what would it cost to buy a custom master-built telly? Hmm. <laughs> because technicality or not, my guitar is master-built, meaning it was built by one and one person only. So I hit up the old interwebs to see what the deal was. And right now the cheapest master-built telly is going for $8,800 Canadian used. That's more than five times as much as what it cost me to make mine. Especially when you consider the fact that the weakest components of my guitar are the hardware and the electronics, spend a little more off the bat in hiring components at the start, and I've got a custom made guitar that, in my humble opinion, holds tune, plays and sounds as good as and looks better than say a four to $5,000 custom guitar, which is what it would cost to buy a comparable custom telly, by the way. Remember when I said uniqueness was one of the criteria that I was gonna go by? My guitar is one of one, one of a kind. The design, the inlays, the wood, all of it, one of a kind. Did making my own guitar lead to a sale? Yes, yes it did. I didn't end up making someone an actual guitar, but a very good friend of mine's husband plays bass and she wanted something guitar related for his birthday. So I busted out this little Fender bass catch-all tray with a song quote in it for him. Was I able to retire from the proceeds of this project? No, sadly I was not. But the reality is word of mouth is a key ingredient in selling your stuff and I've done yet another project for another happy customer. So. I made a sale. I created an actual playable, beautiful guitar from chunks of wood that I can plug in and make amazing sounds with. Knowing that I could make another if I wanted to is beyond empowering. Those feelings are pretty hard to match, I'll be honest with you. So put a price on that. Sounds bad to my ears. But what about the cost of the CNC itself? The whole point of the video was to show you that a CNC is an investment that can pay for itself. Like I said earlier, can the things you were going to buy make you money after you've bought them? But on top of it, it's an investment in you. Think about how many freaking super cool things you can make for yourself from cheap and easy to crazy technical and super high end. My list goes on and on with why buying a CNC saved me money for things that I was buying anyways. Whether you use your CNC to make money or save money, one way or the other, your CNC will be paid off in good time. What kind of projects would you make that could save you money? We wanna hear what you think, so let us know in the comments down below. Now go buy a CNC so we can see around your CNC. Come here, give me a hug.